My name is Graham Parker and this, this is the Hoof GP YouTube channel. In this video, my finger almost gets swallowed by a cow's hoof. We have a very special guest and Craig doesn't have a clue what's going on. Guys, if you haven't already joined the herd, then please think about doing so by clicking the subscribe button below and joining us on this incredible journey. Hello and welcome to the Hoof GP. Today we've got a special guest. And when I say special guest, I mean he's special and he's a guest. You guys should know him, but you probably don't. This is Cammy Wilson. Hi there, Hoof GP fans. Just uh, checking your crushes and all that before we start the game. Cammy is uh, from a strange part of Scotland. They call it Ayrshire. And he's been allowed out for the day. To the Hoof GP's apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Cammy. I'm 31 years old. I'm a sheep farmer from southwest Scotland, not too far from where Graham's based, in a place called Ayrshire. Most famous around the world for the birthplace of Robert Burns. Now, trimmed thousands of sheep's feet. Who's can't be that much harder? Who's can't be that much harder? Who's can't be that much harder? How much harder? How much harder? Can they? Craig's about to get a shock because Craig doesn't know that Cammy's coming with us today. So I figured we'd just get Cammy to pick Craig up just to freak him out. Craig being Craig, he'll probably just jump straight in the pickup, belt up without even realising that it's not me driving. Anyway, with that said, we do need to get to the farm. So we better jump to the pickup and crack on to go and get Craig. So we'll see you there. Morning. I've taken over. Uh -huh. I've taken over the run. Over the what? I'm just taking over the run for Graham. Oh, right. uh, I phoned him last night. I says, Graham, you're a busy man. Let me take a load off you. How are you? I'm not bad, just so. Good, I'm Cammy. You're Cammy? Yeah, First time I met you, mate. You're Cammy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Quite exciting, uh, eh? Hi. Quite shocking. <laughs> I actually thought I'd stepped into the wrong pickup there. <laughs> I oh, saw man. your face, that was so good. Yeah. <laughs> you look <laughs> back, looked at the crush. The crush is there. Yeah, it's the same van. <laughs> Aye. Look at him. There's the boss, man. Aye. <laughs> he went to the back door. And he And he opened it and he looked and he went, they looked at the pickup to make sure it was the right one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who Kami is? No. The sheep came. He's, he's got a huge sheep. I know, know it's the top. <laughs> anyway, with that done, let's get on to the serious business. Having some feet. So we are here. We're here at the dairy and they milk just over 1200 cows here. Jersey crosses. It can be really difficult to trim and capture and work with and things, but quite good to be here because there's not, not much lameness at all. You know you're not just here for a video, right, Cammy? It's working. Well, I heard you say these ones are a bit smaller and a bit more awkward. I'm wondering if you're going to need my sheep wrestling skills here. You know, you maybe call that wrestling. Down here, we call that illegal. <laughs> <laughs> now my wheels One thing about when Graham was his camera, he always kind of turns around and flashes in my face and I have no idea what to say. Oh. <laughs> you wish I flashed in your face. So the farmer will tell us the night before how many we've got to do roughly and I think he said 4 here and 42 at the other place. This farm milks on two different units. So we come here to do a small amount and then we go to the main place to do the bulk of the work. It really has some impressive setup when you see it up close. And I thought it was all just done for the TV. It is really that good. The, the crush is amazing, but the pickup is every bit as bad as you'd imagine it would be. And I thought mine was bad. Being someone who's spent their whole life just working with sheep, I'm a little bit scared of cows. I'm just glad I've got Craig here to protect me. <laughs> These are a bit more my kind of size though. See the voiceover now just slagging us. Alright, bring them all this time, Cammy. 
See, that's where we get most of them, this farm. Overgrowth on the outside claws, inside claws, totally fine. And if I look at our front feet, they're probably perfect. So we're just leveling these up. If we didn't level this up, if you can imagine, there should be 50-50 weight on the two digits. But clearly there's not if one's bigger than the other. It's like having a really big shoe on and one little shoe. So this starts to get bruised. So when I trim this back, you'll see there's probably purple and red bruising, like hemorrhaging in the sole here. Now I'm not just, just talking to Cammy when he's what I've said. these things. I'm also talking to a girl called Caitlin who is a new employee to this farm. And Rory, the farm owner, wants her to know as much as she possibly can about these cows' feet and the issues that they specifically deal with on this farm. That will allow Caitlin to help with the rest of the team pick out the cows, which would really benefit from being trimmed. When you get overgrowth and over weight burdening, you would get bruising in this area here. So if you look here, quite difficult to pick up. See this little patch here? That's bruising and obviously bruising is bleeding so that is the same as an ulcer to a much lesser extent so obviously if we left this just continued to grow she would eventually be really lame because of that same spot you see there there's hemorrhaging again and as I go deeper it gets more and more prominent I'm not cutting away the hemorrhaging that's not what's important it's important to remo remove the material here that's overburdening that spot so it's not actually the horn with the hemorrhaging in it that I need to get rid of it's the problem that's causing it and by doing this cutting away this hoof horn here we are getting rid of it so we've not even touched that foot so now the weight bearing should be about 50-50 from here to here and she shouldn't have any problems. That's the idea anyway. If you look at her front foot, you can see it's pretty much perfect. She's stood on it nice and level and we wouldn't normally lift this up. But I'll lift it up just to show you. But there's no point. Right. So they are perfectly level. She's wearing them really nicely. And if we do anything to alter anything, then it's gonna change her balance. And she's looked after them so far for the last couple of years. So why should we intervene if there's no problem there? On a, a traditional dairy cow that's housed, there would be overgrowth. We'd be checking for ulceration and bruising in here. But I know these cows really well. And I know that there's no lameness prevalence in the front feet, well, almost never. Working with the amazing people who work on these farms is every bit as important to me as actually trimming the cow's feet. These people are in charge of these cows and they can and do often look after their cows to a very high degree. So the more information we can give them, the better they'll be able to keep their cows. the cow's walking along, she's walking like this. Right, so the out one, outside outsider one. ones. He's, have you seen this? Look, look. Come in here with the camera, look. <laughs> oh, I got a cell! Although teaching others about the problems associated with cow's feet and how to spot them is hugely important, the most important task of today is actually treating these cows. If these cows were just standing around, that would be fine, but we have them in the crush. So we need to get their feet in order and get them back out to pasture as soon as we possibly can. With that said, we only have four cows to do at this farm before we can pack up and head over to the other farm, where there are over 40 waiting for us to trim. So we just had four to do at this farm and now we're going to head over to north where there's about 40 to do. It's actually one of the few times where we'll pack up and not clean everything because they're basically run as the same farm as one, even though there's two separate units. It's not cross-contamination. <laughs> oh, this is 
is going to be slippy. It's going to be it's really be slippy. Yeah. Now it has definitely been said in the comments on this channel before how good I am at reversing and it actually is something that I really pride myself on. The next few minutes however don't go all that well. Now, this is some real intense stuff here, probably better reserved for like Jeremy Clarkson's farm, someone who's actually able to drive. But the good thing is, anything he wrecks is his own. You may not be able to see this in the camera, but the reason why it is so slippy is because there is an astroturf down here. It's just an artificial grass that a lot of dairy farmers use now, partly because it keeps the place from being too mucky, but also it's good for the cow's feet. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, oh steady! Well, it's going well. Caitlin, reverse that in for a moji. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh well, that's how you do that, I guess. Once the crush is finally in position, we need to crack on and get these ladies through the crush. Yes, I'm enjoying this day, especially with Caitlin and Cammy here, but the job at hand is what is absolutely important to us. The only thing is, this cow seems to have the wrong idea. successful than the crush coming back. <laughs> It's really nice having Cammy here, and now we've got Caitlin as well, who works at the farm. She's just started working here, and we're teaching her why cows need to feet trimmed so regularly, so that she knows how to spot which cows need to feet trimmed and which ones are okay right now. So it's really cool because it keeps you enthusiastic when new people are along the side, and keeps you on your game because they ask a lot of questions. So you need to make sure you're up on your knowledge, which hopefully I am right now. Out of the 40 or so cows we have to trim at this farm today, there is only one cow with any lameness issues. The rest are just like this one right now. They need a little bit of a trim. They have a bit of overgrowth. They need rebalanced. If we left these cows like this, they would probably start to show signs of lameness within the next month or two. So it's just as well that we arrive at this farm every two weeks to make sure we're right on top of any lameness issues. The world of cattle hoof trimming is a weird and wonderful one, and it's one which I love and have met many, many friends through, and now YouTube seems to be doing the same for me. Cammy has come into my life, and I'm very glad that he has, because we're so like-minded. As you can see here, as with any apprenticeship, you start from the bottom, pun intended, and eventually I'll get my chance to trim a couple. Watch and learn, and then have a go. So if the cows here are going to get problems, this is the main problem they get. So they'll get cracks in the white line because they're walking so much. 
and then those cracks aren't actually that big a problem until they get exacerbated by these stones. So the stone probably wasn't there to begin with, the crack was, and then that stone works its way into the crack and makes it much, much worse. So I pick the stones out first. And then if I left that, obviously more stones are gonna get stuck in that crack. So I'm just gonna slice away that part of it. Too far. Hold up, wait a second, wait a second, this isn't an advert, don't skip it or anything like that. I have a friend called Jane, or rather the dogs have a friend called Jane. Jane is the person who looks after the dogs when we go away on holiday or over the weekend. And Jane, a bit like me and possibly you, is not an iron lady, she's not an athlete, she's not a gym bunny, nothing like that, but she is doing an incredible 57 mile trek in blisteringly hot heat and freezing cold temperatures during the night and she's doing it for the greater good. So if any of you guys are able to join me in donating whatever you can, whether that's a pound or a dollar or even a well-wishing comment in the comment section below, that would be incredible. There's a link at the top of the description so you guys can go over there just like I'm about to do and donate whatever you can. Like I said, it doesn't need to be much, just a dollar or a pound or even a well-wishing comment. Back to the video and cheers for that. With problems like this, you never truly know what each swipe of the blade is about to reveal. And at first, I thought this was just a mild problem that a few swipes of this knife would solve. It turns out I was wrong. With each swipe of the blade, I'm reanalyzing the foot, deciding how much further I should go and whether or not we've taken off enough hoof horn. It may look like I have all the confidence in the world. And in fact, I read that in comments fairly regularly. But actually, with every single cut comes an analysis of how we're doing and how this cow's foot is going to end up. Time for the gloves to come off to decide whether or not that black part is corium or if it's... You see here, how deep in the crack goes. The reason I took the gloves off there was because sometimes the corium can look dark underneath. So I needed to feel whether or not this was totally separated or not, and it is. Put yourself in my shoes for a second. Analyze this foot with every single swipe of the blade. Does it need more? Does it need more? Does it need more? It needs more. Another swipe. Another swipe. Another swipe. It's still cracked. There's still loose horn there. Let's swipe up. Let's get under that flap of loose horn. This part here is the problem. That is exposed corium and it's causing real pain for this cow. The fact is, she's had some sort of crack or abscess and it's worked its way right into her foot. Now we haven't actually removed any height from that inner claw, but there is still weight on the outer claw, so we're going to need to use a block on the inside claw to elevate that sore part up off the ground and allow it to heal. So we'll crack the grinder out, heat the foot up, bovi bond on the block, and then admire the work that we've just done. It's quite good I get to do my Hoof GP super fan bit and say we're going to bovey bond a block on it. <laughs> this is something really simple that will be fixed with this one trim. There's, this isn't something from the YouTube channel that I would update because this is fixed. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no That's reason it. to see her again. There's a wooden block on there and that wooden block will wear out after six weeks so we don't need to take it off. And that's the beauty of using a wooden block in a situation like this. We'd never need to treat her again so the farmer doesn't need to pay for a toy. Turn and dusty. And with this little cow all patched up and on the road to recovery, it's time for Kami to take the ropes, earn his wings and start trimming his first cow. This is not something I take lightly or just brush off as something casual that's happening. This is something that is hugely important to me and it's why I will be right next to him for every single step of his little not journey. Trimming flat. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trimming end on with two o'clock. Not going forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. I'm going down, lift it up, down, lift it up. It's just when I do it. So we've already run through a lot of the steps and guidance that Kami needs to trim this foot. And now we've gone through some grinder safety. It's time to crack on with the job in hand. A bit wee for me, though, no? 
They say about small hands, don't you? <laughs> small gloves? Small gloves, yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> right, so just throw that in nice and casually There's like I do and hook it on. Yep, it's really easy, you've seen me do it oh, quite a lot. Yep. Right, this time just very casual, just swing yeah. it in. No. Very casual, just swing it in. There oh, we I go. did it! That's actually quicker than I thought you would. So now put one finger on this yes. to, to tension it. Yep. And then you're going to hold that all the way to the top. And as that starts to tension, just let, let your finger go. Yep. Perfect. Look at that. Now, that was the easy bit though. <laughs> we put the nozzle in between the feet so that you don't touch this by mm -hmm. accident when you're working on this one. Yep. So all it's doing is separating the toes. So some people worry about cross-contamination and that definitely is a factor, but none of these cows have dermatitis. So we're not transferring dermatitis from the last cow to this cow. And you just throw it away if you did, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. And they get washed at the end of, we actually do reuse them, but they get washed at the end of Between that. farms? Yeah. yeah. Right. So this is the grinder that I use, and it's extremely aggressive, but Craig doesn't even like to use this, so Cammy's gonna use our least aggressive grinder. And rather than actually trim the cow's foot, well, he is gonna trim it, but he's not gonna finish it off at all. What he's gonna do is get a feel for it, and I do kind of trust Cammy because he's an excellent shearer, so he'll be good with his hands and he will have a kind of tentative touch. But I'm standing right next to him. These cows matter to me a lot. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce some of the height, and then I'll finish that off, and then we'll give Cammy the knife so that he can have a go modeling out and see what he makes of that. Is it going to be easy? Definitely not. <laughs> you make it look very easy. You can stand and think what an easy job this is, but I know it's not. I hope I can make it look as therapeutic as you do. You're going to stand here. We're not going to touch this one at all. We're going to reduce the height of the whole of this outside foot first. So you'll start at the top, using that two o'clock position, yes. and then work your way down gradually that. Yeah? Yes, let's try that. Okay. You make it sound so easy. Let Hold me on. Just get a feel for this. Oh, of course, danger. Danger doesn't take a day off. Is that going to fit you? Oh, beautiful, ah, beautiful. Eight sizes bigger. It sits on my big ears. So rather than show you every second of Cammy's trim and spoil the outcome for you, you guys can pause this video and jump across to the Sheep Game YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe over there and watch the video to see what you make of Cammy's very first effort at trimming a cow's hoof. I can let you know for sure that I was impressed. Yep, that's looking pretty good. It's not quite finished, but I'll finish that off in a second. This is the bit you're going to find hard. Okay. <laughs> Tidy. Oh, I quite enjoyed that. We've got 30 at the next farm, so crack on. Crack on. <laughs> Talk about life experiences. Trimming feet with a hoof GP. How many people would love to do that? Thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully that looked okay there. I'll see it back later. Don't give me too much of a hard time if I'm not very good. Now most of my videos are based around sheep farming, sheep shearing, sheep pregnancy scanning, everything sheep, but I love an opportunity to come away for a day to something like this and learn a new skill. And it really has been a fantastic insight into what Graham and Craig are doing every day behind what you see on YouTube. What a day, what a laugh, and what a life I get to live. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, let me know what you liked about it down in the comments. In the meanwhile, go and check out The Sheep Game.